In 2007, two friends living together lost their jobs and had trouble making money for the next rent. Till one of them got kind of desperate, and in his desperation, he turned to his friend and told him, I have an idea. We've got a whole bunch of mattresses that no one is using. Do you want to get some random strangers to sleep on these mattresses in, in our own apartment? In exchange for money, of course. I think it's fair to say that if any of us were his friend, we would have politely declined and then started looking for another roommate who's not going to get us both killed. But in fact, his friend was an entrepreneur, and he saw potential in the idea. So we helped him execute it and develop it, and over time it grew to become Airbnb. And his two founders, Brian Chesky and Joey Gebbia, these two people, both have a net worth of $3.7 billion each. In 2009, a man pulled his best friend away from a pizza and movie get-together so he can tell him about this idea that he was really excited to build, an idea for an app. But his friend was surprised to learn that the idea isn't that exciting. He told him, I want to make an address book. And in this address book, next to each individual isn't going to be their actual address, instead it's going to be their status. Something like at the gym, or sleeping at a stranger's apartment and help. But I think it's fair to say that if he was, anyone, uh, if he was any of us, we would, have, we would have went back to the movie and enjoyed the pizza while it lasts. But his friend was actually a, um, an, an experienced coder, and he saw potential in the idea. So he helped him execute it and develop it, and over time it grew to become WhatsApp. And as many of us probably know, the developer sold it to Facebook just a few years later for $19 billion. I have another story, but this one is a bit more personal. So I'm a game developer. I love to develop and make games and design them and just get as many people as possible to play them. Um, sorry, by the way, parents. But when I started out back in 2014, I was, I was a beginner looking to improve. So I started going to these things called game jams. For those, who, for those who do not know, game jams are these exciting, intense events where coders, writers, musicians, and all kinds of people from all sorts of different creative disciplines, they come together, make a whole video game from scratch in less than 48 hours, all based on a theme that they all find out at the same time. It's really exciting stuff. But here's the problem. I was a beginner surrounded by industry professionals. And I was always so keen to impress. And that led to another problem. Every time they would announce a theme, I would just try way too hard to be creative. I would sit there in what I would call a mental constipation, just going through one idea after another, after another, throwing them away until I just land on something that sounds cool. And for some reason, the game that I would make 48 hours later wouldn't be that great. I came up with wild, bizarre ideas like draw magical rituals to make potions and medicine for monsters or tip the platform over to your side to sacrifice yourself and appease the balanced monster of the village. Way too many monsters in my old ideas. Until one day, I decided, you know what? I'm going to try and come up with the most boring idea I could, just to see what happens. So in 2017, the next Game Jam rolls along, and the theme this time was transmission. And my idea that I came up with was basically this. It's going to be a puzzle game filled with, you guessed it, puzzle pieces. And every puzzle piece can make other puzzle pieces move. That is it. That is literally it. And when I told this, friend, uh, when I told this idea to my friends who never developed games before, they told me, Omar, you have to change your idea or stop going to game jams altogether, because they're wasting people's time. But I made, a promise, I made a promise to myself, I stuck with it, and I honestly thought I was going to make a terrible game. But over the next 48 hours, something interesting happened that kind of shocked me. Because I started with a basic idea, it laid the foundation for more ideas to be easily added on top. I found myself in this zen state, where the more I was working on the game, the more I could come up with more and more mechanics that just made the game a lot more fun. Now, the part of the story where I become a billionaire didn't happen yet, <laughs> but something a lot more priceless happened right after. And it is this, a room filled with people fully engaged in my game. 
And for a game developer like me, sometimes there is no better sight other than a billion dollar check. So what happened? I started with the worst idea I ever had and ended with the best game I ever made at the time. Why did this happen? This is because of a principle I always try to maintain whenever I come up with new ideas, and it is this. Every single great idea started out bad, bland, and boring. No great idea ever started great. All of these entrepreneurs we always hear about, they never woke up one day with an idea fully formed in their minds. Instead, in fact, every single idea that ever was, and every idea that ever will be, is going to start boring and bland. And that is because of one simple reason. They're unexplored. And what do a lot of us do when we have, a, when we have an idea that we think is too boring and bland? We throw it out the window and then just sit there waiting for the next flash of inspiration that's honestly never going to happen. Instead, what a lot of these successful people did was they invested their time in their idea. They took a leap of faith and they started developing it until something great comes out of it. So this leads us to the next main question. All right, I have a boring idea. How can I make it great? It's not going to be through mental constipation. It's going to be through creativity. And I know a lot of people have heard, about, have heard talks about creativity before, but I want to try something different today. I've developed over 10 video games. I've taken part in a lot of different art projects. And I feel that I've come to learn three important principles on creativity that I honestly believe can be applied to any creative discipline. And I don't just want to tell you what these principles are. I want to show you what they are. And I want to show you exactly why they work. And I'm going to express that the best way I know how to express myself, and that is through a game. Now, if you guys followed the instructions uh, before, the, before the speech and downloaded the app yourself, you can follow along as we build something together. But for those of you who don't have an Android phone and you have an uh, iPhone, you can follow along with the presentation and maybe go buy an Android later. <laughs> Look at your screens right now, for those of you who have the app. And what do you see? It's a blank canvas. If you're a student or a writer, it's an empty Word document. If you're a painter or an artist, it's probably an empty Photoshop file. If you're a coder, it might be an unimplemented Java main method. So it's an empty canvas that is really hard to overcome. By show of hands, how many people, how many of you had trouble moving on from an empty canvas before? A lot of us. How, why is it that something so empty can be so debilitating and paralyzing? For, for a lot of us, it's because we have no idea where to start. But through my experience of creating over, my, uh, over all of my life, I discovered it's because the idea we're starting with is so small and so basic, and we don't really have enough faith that it's going to fill our whole canvas. So I want you to look back at your screen and look at that red cube at the top. This is your first idea. This is the boring, basic idea that to get together we're going to develop. So I want you to drag that idea, put it down on your canvas, and execute it. And you're going to see something interesting happening. This is the first brushstroke in your painting. The first few words of your essay, the first few verbal declarations in your code. Putting down, putting, the physical act of putting something down on our canvas triggers something in our brains. It helps us understand our inner environment and our own cap capabilities and skills. It helps us explore our creative environment and discover new tools and new ways to combine them. And all of these discoveries, they manifest themselves into new ideas, new blocks, new shapes, new ideas that we can add on top of our canvas. So to bring a quote from one of my favorite books of all time, Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson, the most important step anyone can take is always the next one. So take the next step. Take the next cube, put it down on your canvas, and do it again and again and again, never stopping to analyze or to choose or to think. Build yourself some momentum. Go through this intuition train. And the more you go, the more you build, the clearer the vision of your final product, the final idea is going to manifest itself inside your minds. And sometimes it's going to be kind of shocking. Sometimes the idea you're going to end up with is wildly different from where you started. To give you an example, today I'm working on an app called Artopia. It's an app that allows you to build and paint 3D paintings all around you using your phone and your camera, 
And anyone else with the same app can see these paintings in, in the same location. Now, this idea was never born out of some need to express myself artistically or out of some intention to bring the world together through art or any of these good intentions. Instead, it was born out of sheer frustration and laziness while pl playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> for, the two, for the two or three of you who never played this game before, it's basically a game where you can make progress by, going to, by physically moving to a, to a landscape or like a landmark around you. Um, the problem was, I was living in Hawali, a district in Kuwait that barely has any landmarks whatsoever. So making progress was difficult. And then I had an idea. What if I made my own game? What if I made my own app where anyone can put their own points wherever they wanted, and these, these points would appear on everyone else's maps? So I made a basic prototype. And I started walking down the beautiful streets of Hawali, and every time I would see an ugly, an ugly spot, I would place a point on it. <laughs> I had 200 points down. <laughs> and then I looked back, and I discovered something interesting. If you put down a whole bunch of points next to each other, you can basically make art for other people to find on the same map. And this is what sparked the idea for Artopia, to allow people to paint the world. An idea that was born out of the pursuit to continue my own laziness. An idea that never would have happened if I didn't allow myself to execute an idea that I thought was boring. An idea that never would have shown itself if I never allowed myself to be taken with my idea and discover new places that I never thought of before. This is the first principle to start doing and continue doing, to, to paint, to code, to write, to make mistakes and see where your idea takes you. But sometimes you're going to find something like this. Your mind is, it is OK. Your mind may sometimes be filled with way too many ideas of way too much of a variety. That becomes another kind of paralyzing, a paralysis. It becomes difficult to choose your next steps. And the best way I found to overcome this is by limiting myself. And I know what you, what you might be thinking, Omar, this is a talk about creativity, and you're telling us to limit ourselves. But trust me, I want you all uh, on the app to go to click on the filter icon at the bottom of the screen and choose a filter. Limit all of your ideas by shape or, <coughs> or by color, and something interesting is going to happen. All of a sudden, it's not so paralyzing anymore. Why is that? When you start limiting your own options, for one thing, you have a lot less options to choose from. And, every, and you can better analyze every single option and their combinations. But more importantly, anything you make is, become, is going to become a lot more cohesive and a lot more beautiful. And this is why in game jams, we always, they always give us themes to follow. And every single time, I'm always so fascinated by the sheer quantity and variety of the games developed over the next 48 hours every single time without fail. This is the third principle. Don't think outside the box. Instead, think inside the box. Thinking outside the box is going to make your ideas way too random, way too scattered, and you're just going to get paralyzed by it. Limit yourself, and you're going to come out liberated. Now, in your pursuit to become more creative, you're going to have to become best friends with this, a trash bin, or trash can, or Zabala. Now, it's going to take a lot of courage to see, your <coughs> to see your idea through, but sometimes you're going to discover that there's not a lot of potential to your idea. After having invested so much time to it, it's not going to go anywhere. But it's going to, at this, in, this time, in this case, it's going to take a lot more courage to start over. So I want you all to do this now. Tap on the trash bin, trash can, Zibala icon at the bottom and start over. At first, it's going to become difficult. But the more you start over, the more you, pro uh, the more you prototype, the more you gain more experiences that come along with you, the more you're going to find yourself easily able to create perpetually without being burdened by the results. So you're going to create, create, and create with all of these experiences, experiences coming along with you until you finally land on something that is incredible. Jonathan Blow is a famous developer, for, uh, is a famous, <coughs> is a famous developer who is known for this. He developed a video game called Braid, which sold for $4 million in only a time span of a couple of days. A lot of people consider him as an overnight success, but they don't know what happened before. 
He actually developed, prototyped, and scrapped over 15 different games until he landed on Braid. And he never would have considered this time as time wasted because all of these experiences carried along with them and found themselves in this game. So this is the third principle. Prototype often, keep recycling, gain some experiences, and learn when to let an idea go. Now it's your turn. All of you have a canvas in, the, in your hands. All of you, I want you all to give yourself two minutes, apply these principles that I just told you, and build something yourself right now. I'm going to give you two minutes. Start, <clears throat> start putting blocks down perpetually. Don't stop to think or analyze, and just keep putting blocks down. Fill the whole canvas. Give yourself limitations. Stick to only two colors or two different shapes. And if it's not going anywhere, don't be afraid to scrap. And for those of you who are not working on the app, um, I have a couple of entertaining stories to tell you about, famous, about people who were able to solve problems using creative solutions. <laughs> Once upon a time, a woman was working in a bank, and she received a customer who was asking for a $100 loan. She said, all right, but you have a bad credit, so we're going to need some collateral. And he said, OK, here you go. These are the keys to my Mercedes-Benz. So they took their car, and he got his $100 loan and went on in his way. The next day comes along, and he comes back to the bank. He gave her back the $100 loan plus an extra $10 interest, so he, and he got back his car. The woman was confused. She told him, well, you're obviously wealthy. Why do you need a loan from us in the first place? And he told her, well, if I left my car in the, in the other parking lot, it would have cost a lot more than $10. I have another story to tell, but this one is a bit more personal. My dad loves to build puzzles, those puzzle pieces and these pictures that all form together. And his strategy was to put all of the similar puzzle pieces in Tupperware. Now, the problem was our kitchen was running out of Tupperware, and we had no place to store our food. So the solution I came up with was to simply go down to the supermarket and just buy more boxes. Not every idea, not every solution has to be incredibly creative. Sometimes the best solution is staring you right in the face. All right, the two minutes are up. Let's look at the results of everything you've done so far. It's going to take a while because of the internet. This is your work. This is the combination of every single person's creativity put down together. And this is proof that anyone can be creative. A lot, of, a lot of people tell me that creativity is a talent, that people are just born with it. But I honestly think that creativity is a skill. It's a skill that can be learned and developed over time. And it's a skill that you have to learn by taking a voyage into unexplored territory. But a lot of people are afraid to take this voyage. And I think it's the best way to overcome this fear is by taking the first step into the rocky ship and start sailing. Thank you. <laughs>